In this episode, we're gonna talk about whether or not you should have your shoulder in an internally or externally rotated position when the bar's over your head. I want you to have the capability to fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Jump up ahead, I'll take you back to where my problems lie. In trouble, younger daughter done some shit that made my mama cry. Out to the heavens like a blessing for our Nike's lost. Caught in a trance and it's manic depression settled in. Living in the fantasy world. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Horshig, and this is episode 42 of the Ask Squat You Show. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I think you're going to get a lot out of this episode. This is a topic that a lot of people have a lot of questions on, and we hear a lot of different ideas from those across the fitness community, whether they're weightlifting coaches, CrossFit coaches, physical therapists, or doctors. I want to set the bar straight today and give you guys my opinion on this topic. So let's get to the question. Alexis from Portugal writes, Hi Dr. Aaron, I have a question. Which one is better to hold the barbell in an overhead position? With the shoulders in external rotation, the American style, or internal rotation, the Chinese style? Which one provides the most stabilization and safety for our joints? All right, so the topic is of internal versus external rotation at the shoulder whenever the bar is overhead, specifically in the snatch. Now, there are a number of different opinions like I just talked about on this topic. You have people that are talking about uh, when the bar is overhead, the shoulder needs to be externally rotated, or there's some that will say that certain weightlifters or the Chinese coaches always teach internal rotation. What do we believe? So let's start today just talking about some general biomechanics of what's actually happening at the shoulder joint. Now, as you elevate your arm overhead, the ball, which is the end of your humerus, actually rotates within the socket, basically like a golf ball sitting on a golf tee. It has to rotate externally in order to keep the ball in the center of the golf tee. If not, as you came up and there's not sufficient external rotation, the ball would slide forward off the tee and you can get some good impingement in the front side of your shoulder. So normal mechanics, no matter who you are, as your arm rotates above your head, your shoulder joint is externally rotating. Now, if you're questioning this as a fact, let's turn to some research and see what it says. I wanna share with you an article today. This is titled, Motion of the Shoulder Complex During Multiplanar Humeral Elevation. It's a fancy way of saying the researchers looked at what exactly is going on at the shoulder complex when you're moving your arm over your head. Now I'm gonna read you the very last line when we're talking about what's happening at the arm. Now the humerus, these multiplanar data also support the premise irrespective of plane of elevation, meaning it doesn't matter if our hands are in close as for a jerk or if our hands are out wide during a snatch, irrespective of which way our hands are over our head, the humerus, your arm bone, moves toward a similar final position at the end of raising the arm of external rotation. This means that whether your arm is here or right here, as you move your arm over your head, your arm moves externally. You have to externally rotate to get your arm overhead. So this is in fact an externally rotated position. Now I see this all the time as a physical therapist because if someone is lacking enough external rotation, let's say after a surgery where everything's tightened down, there's a lot of swelling and tightness, because they are lacking specifically external rotation, they will be unable to have enough elevation or flexion of their arm because things will start smashing together. So the more external rotation we have, the more the golf ball can stay on the center of the golf tee and your arm can raise overhead. So no question about it, our arm in this position over the head is externally rotated. Now then comes the cue, do we cue from that position of the barbell over your head to internally or externally rotate? Well, let's think about that. In the overhead position, external rotation would be this. So we'd be cueing under, we'd externally rotate. The thumbs would be going this way. Internal rotation would be the opposite, so thumbs going that way. So if we think about our application over to maybe being on a rings or doing a pull up, uh, if we are in this position, so the elbows are turning and breaking that way, that is external rotation. Whereas if we're pulling under, maybe you're on a ring doing a muscle up and your arms are pointing out, that's an internally rotated position. However, when we have a barbell in the mix, we can't really internally or externally rotate the position because our hands must be locked onto the barbell. So I'm just gonna use this PVC pipe as a cue. When I'm in that overhead position, I ideally want my entire arm locked out and I want it stacked with my shoulder blade and thoracic spine in a good position like that. Now, if we have our arms and our hands grabbing the barbell firmly as we should, we can't necessarily internally or externally rotate a lot because we wanna maintain that grasp. 
Here's a good visual. I'm starting here with my elbows locked, shoulders in slight external rotation and armpits forward. Now, without trying to move my shoulder blades in only the shoulder or glenohumeral joint, I'm going to try and internally rotate. Obviously, you can see without giving up my hand grasp on the bar, I can't really internally rotate too much from the starting position, which is slight external rotation. Even then, when I do internally rotate, you can see I have to move my wrist from an extended position, which we know is optimal for stability of the joint, to a knuckles on top neutral wrist position, which is less stable and can create some long-term issues for the wrist and thumb joint if trying to catch weight in that position. So, with this position overhead, I've got a lot of tension through my arm, it's locked out. This is a firm, strong position and we are in external rotation. Now many of you may say, well Aaron, what about the Chinese? They preach internal rotation overhead. And yes, I have read some of the training manuals by the Chinese that say this, but what position do you see these two elite weightlifters from China end up in? That's not internal rotation. If we take a closer look at the arms, you can see the elbow bone is facing down. You can see the line of the bicep and the armpits are forward, meaning the shoulder is clearly in external rotation. Here's another great example of an elite Chinese lifter performing a snatch. As you can see, during the catch, his wrists are slightly extended and his arms are locked out in a strong position. Can you see where the biceps are pointed? When I draw a line along the side of the bicep, you can clearly see the muscle belly is pointed upwards and not forward as it would be if this athlete was in internal rotation. Now this is further backed up by research that has actually looked into the mechanics of the shoulder during the snatch motion. Now I'm going to bring up our second piece of research, rotator cuff activation during the Olympic snatch under various loading conditions. And I'm going to read you the main point. And that is that the infraspinatus, one of the small rotator cuff muscles, is most active in its highest percentage during the turnover phase of the snatch. In this uh, part of the movement, it is attributed because of the shoulder moving into external rotation during the catch phase. The infraspinatus, one of the small rotator cuff muscles, like I said, its main purpose is to externally rotate and maintain that position of the shoulder joint. So this research again is showing us that as the arm moves overhead in the snatch, it is externally rotating. The infraspinatus, one of the small rotator cuff muscles that does that external rotation and then maintains that tension, is most active during that phase, the catch and turnover of the snatch. Now, one of the most outspoken teachers of the internal rotation position, or at least the teaching of that theory, is Olympian Alexiev Torokiti. Now, he does a great job on social media of teaching the mechanics of Olympic weightlifting, except for this part I think is just a little bit misunderstood. Now you can see in this video that he is moving into a lot of internal rotation during this barbell lift. However, it's just with the barbell. If we slow it down, we see something else whenever he goes to his heavier lifts. As you can see clearly in this video by Hook Grip, during the turnover and catch portion of the snatch, the wrists are extended and elbows pointed relatively close to the ground, meaning the shoulder is in fact moving into external rotation. Now, I'm not going to argue against him as far as what internal cues worked best for creating stability in the snatch, as it obviously worked for his body in route to becoming an Olympic champion. However, after seeing this video, it's hard to argue that the cue for internal rotation clearly doesn't carry over as much to what actually is happening at the shoulder joint during heavier attempts. Now, by moving the position of the shoulder blade, we can change what it looks like is going on at the actual shoulder joint. So from this position, if I squeeze my shoulders together, pull them back, it looks like I'm going into a little bit more of internal rotation. My shoulders actually stay in the exact same. However, if I push my armpits forward like that, it looks like I'm doing more external rotation. But again, my shoulder joint is staying roughly the same amount of external rotation. Olympian Chad Vaughn is showing here a great demonstration for this position. You can see in the bottom position, he has his elbows locked, his wrist extended or palms up, and his shoulder blades are down and facing forward. The only way for him to really internally rotate is to give up this stable position with his shoulder blades and move them forward, which you can see here is a less than ideal receiving position. The goal with this is to get away from the understanding of cueing people internal rotation or external rotation. Remember, the shoulder is going to vary a little bit in the amount of rotation they have based on their anatomy and how they're holding the barbell based on the inclination of their chest. All I want you to think about instead as far as cueing is to have those palms pacing, facing straight up and down, we're locking the arm out, we're having the shoulder blades pulled together, 
and we're in a nice stacked position overhead. We're not forward because remember, if we're internally rotating a lot, we're dropping the bar forward. I don't want to externally rotate a lot even any further because then the barbell is going to go really behind my head. So we want to have a good stacked position, arm, shoulder, and shoulder blade and upper back in a good position. And from there, we have good shoulder stability. The shoulder has to be in an externally rotated position in order to maintain its position in the middle of the T as the arm is overhead. From there, there's always going to be a little variation. So I hope you guys liked today's quick uh, Ask What You Show and was able to answer a couple of your questions. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on this topic. Um, I'd like to know any of your questions on the shoulder internal and external rotation uh, debate, I guess you would call it. Please let me know in the comment section below if you have any, and if you have any other weightlifting specific questions that I can tackle on future shows. Until next week, guys, happy squatting. Hometown hero on the road doing shows and sold out arenas. You can call me what you want, but you won't ever slow my dreams up. This is the vision of a dreamer. I seem to.